Now, again, double X, female, double Y, uh, or XY, you have a male. So the thing with that, there's a gene on the Y chromosome called the sex determining region Y. And this is one of the form, the most power, or the most powerful gene in determining maleness. So maleness meaning developing male inter external and internal genitalia. So what happens is that, again, around the 11 week mark, this SRY gene kicks in. And now instead of having that in, un, unformed genitalia, now you have the fusing, fusing of these genital folds to form the shaft of the penis. And you start developing the scrotum and the penis in a male embryo. So a little review, pop quiz. Now, XX. So what this will this individual develop into, male or female? Again, double X, you have a female. If you have XY, then what happens? Well, now it's a boy. Now, let's have an XY individual, but say something goes wrong with the SRY gene. Say something mutates the SRY gene, inactivates it, or sometimes it's all altogether deleted. So say you take SRY out of the Y chromosome. So what happens to that individual during development? Well, someone who has a mutation that inactivates SRY or a deletion that removes SRY from the Y chromosome, they will develop like this. So as you can see, just by appearance, you would think this is a woman, this is a female. So they have an X and Y, but something went wrong with SRY, and now they're phenot what we call phenotypically female. So by appearance, they look female, even though if you look at down at their karyotype and look at their G their chromosomes, you see that they have a Y chromosome, but something happens where they develop the appearance of a female. And there's also related syndrome called androgen insensitivity syndrome, where you have the SRY intact or partially functioning, but something is wrong with androgen receptor or things that metabolize androgens and cause create androgens or what we call transcription factors, which are things that help to activate genes. So if anything goes wrong with the SRY or the signals emitting from the SRY and the, the genes that help with SRY, that can cause an XY individual to develop phenotypically and appearance-wise as a female. Now, what do we have here? Okay, we have the SRY gene. So there's another gene now. Again, don't look this up online because why? And actually, this is what the gene I studied for my master's thesis and wrote it on. But what is DAX1? So DAX1 stands for Dosage Sensitive Sex Reversal Adrenal Hypoplasia Critical Region on Chromosome X Gene 1. Let's just call it DAX1. All right, so DAX1 is actually on chromosome X. So it's not on the Y chromosome. So if it's on the X chromosome, how many copies of this gene do women have? Well, women have two X chromosomes, so they should have two copies of the X1. Now men, one X chromosome, one copy of the X1. So the thing about this is it's very important for sex hormone regulation. Again, this is actually more complicated than I'm talking about, but it actually affects things like androgen signaling in the cells, estrogen signaling, progesterone. It pretty much plays a role in all sex hormone receptors. It also plays a very important role in stem cells as well. So it's a very powerful gene, but it's also very poorly understood. Even like, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to date myself, but years later, we still don't know too much about this gene. So if anything goes wrong with SRY or the genes that help carry out the instructions from SRY, that can cause effects on the development of male and female genitalia. So the thing is that what happens can happen. Well, one thing is that DAX1, okay, it's on the X chromosome. So here we have, again, XX, two copies of DAX1, and this person will develop as female. And then XY, so one copy of DAX1, we have SRY active. This baby will turn up to be male. Now, what happens if you DAX1 and SRY, XY individual, but DAX1 gets duplicated? Now you have two copies of DAX1. So in these normal individuals, who has two copies of DAX1? Now again, two copies in this individual, two copies in females. So if you can have an XY individual, but if they have a duplication in DAX1, which is rare, but did ha does happen, 
they develop just like that. So again, they develop phenotypically female. So they appear as female even though they have an X and Y chromosome. Now the next one. So again, it's important for sex hormone regulation and in carrying out the instructions of SRY and also help helping androgens have their effects in the developing embryo and fetus. But what happens if DAX1 is mutated or deleted? So now we're not talking about SRY. So we did talk about, okay, if you have two copies of DAX1, you develop as female. But what happens if you remove DAX1 from the equation? So this is what you often see. So the thing is that DAX1, again, if you have two in female, one in male. But what if you have zero? So no functional copies of DAX1 in a XY individual. Well, the thing is that do they develop as male? They still have the SRY gene, but remember, DAX1 is one of the important genes. Among, again, don't worry about memorizing all the genes like steroidogenic factor, androgen receptor. Just think about SRY for now, and DAX1, again, just go with what I'm talking about in lecture. So again, the same thing happens. You have two copies, you develop like this. If you have zero copies that were functional, you the individuals develop like this. So this is why they call it dosage sensitive. If you have too many and they're too little in the XY individual, they develop as phenotypically female. And the other thing is that it's also important in controlling the development of adrenal glands. So adrenal glands refer all the way back to endocrinology. So adrenal cortex hormones, we have mineral corticoids that regulate salt and blood pressure and water retention, and then you have glucocorticoids like cortisol, very important in releasing sugars and blood glucose from glycogen, also stimulating gluconeogenesis, and also sex as well. So sex hormones as androgens. So glomerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis, they produce these categories of hormones going from outer to inner. So again, we're talking about androgens now. So if you have uh, in the so the thing about DAX1, it's not important, not only important in carrying out the functions of SRY, it's also important in developing a normal adrenal cortex. So if you have an abnormal adrenal cortex, you're going to have abnormal levels and actually lower levels of all three of these, especially the androgens. All right, so let's talk about congenital adrenal hypoplasia, which can result from a deletion or mutation of the DAX1 gene from an individual. So again, hypo meaning under and adrenal referring to the adrenal gland. So congenital meaning that they're born with it. So what's happening in these people with this condition? They're born with an adrenal gland that's not fully developed. So it's not, it might be functional to extent, but not nearly as functional as a normal adrenal gland. So what happens if the adrenal glands are underdeveloped or lack or lack the function of a adre normal adrenal gland? Well, you have adrenal insufficiency. Again, those layers of the adrenal cortex, your mineral corticoids, your glucocorticoids, and your sex hormones, your androgens. And also, remember, what's on the inside of an adrenal gland? You also have that adrenal medulla, which produces epinephrine and norepinephrine. So you have a hormonal deficiency in all of these hormones. So the thing is that the zona reticularis normally produces androgens. So I actually have this image in your slides that I uploaded online. I'm not sure if they're allowed to show pictures of, even though they're medical pictures, these are what genitals, if you go to the, your slides, you see that these genitals, they're very ambiguous. They're, you can't really tell whether it's a penis or it's a labia or a scrotum. So what happens is like, not only does that affect as a result from a, uh, DAX1 not being able to carry out SRY's functions, but due to all of these other hormones not being produced in enough quantities, this causes genitals to develop, develop and strangely, and also not just affects genitals, but the rest of the baby as well.